find that the best way to watch Blood Blockade Battlefront is to just kick back, relax, don't think about it too much, and just accept all of the incredibly awesome absurdity which is exploding off of the screen. If you allow yourself to do that, you're probably going to get a lot of enjoyment out of this episode right here, which was basically just a really great excuse to see Klaus and Stephen A. Starface fight against a blood breed vampire. His very strange half-skeletal dog, half-flower creature. And it's also another great excuse to introduce us to a new character who's already one of my favorite characters from the series, Luciana Estevez, who is not related to the coach from the Mighty Ducks, unfortunately, but man... And she's a really fun character, and I absolutely love her gimmick. She's the ultimate doctor, and that's because she can actually create clones of herself. But every single time she does that, the clones actually get a little younger. And whenever she combines all of these clones together into one single entity and form and bring them all back, she becomes a super sexy and super awesome adult. Luciana Estevez is a great character, and I hope to see a little bit more of her in the second season of Blood Blockade Battlefront. And if the intro is any indication, we're definitely going to see the, just that. But what I really loved about this episode is how we also got to go back into the past a little bit and seeing actually what went down during the big collapse, which to me is still kind of a mystery. It's something that they don't tend to go into all that much, and I'm definitely a uh, you know big believer of show don't tell, and I've always sort of like never really wanted to see the origin of the collapse. I just accepted it for what it was. Just a crazy phenomenon where some weird alternate world collided with Earth's, and it created this big pocket space which was now contained where all of these crazy people lived. I really didn't need much of an explanation and thankfully they don't really do too much of that in the episode. It's really more just an excuse to see Klaus and Steven fight against the blood breed with some really intense animation and lots of crazy style which is something that the series is definitely known for. What is kind of unfortunate is that Leonardo Watch, the main character of the series, doesn't really get to do much in this episode. In fact, the overall plot opens up with Zap Renfro who has just been seriously destroyed by an oncoming trailer and they're trying to take him to a hospital when suddenly they arrive at this one that just sort of appears out of nowhere, out of the mist, almost like a phantom hospital. And the design of this place looks really cool. There's this like giant monster type creature which is like jutting out from the front of it and it looks like his entire body is actually being chained down by this massive structure. And then when they go inside there's all manner of ridiculous monsters which reminds me out of a scene of something like Star Wars, kind of like the cantina scene with all just the crazy aliens and creatures and we get to see that Zap Renfro is going to go under the knife, he's going to have some surgery done and hopefully he'll be better. Apparently he's in a life-threatening situation but during all of this we get a flashback sequence of showing us what happened during the Great Eclipse or excuse me, the Great Collapse. I'm confusing the series with Berserk for some reason and it confirms a couple of things for us. One, that Klaus and Steven apparently already had these crazy supernatural-esque abilities to combat these creatures even before the Great Collapse. Maybe it's something that was triggered during this time, but considering how well they're able to use their attacks, I'm guessing that they've had these abilities for a very long time, with Klaus being some sort of weird half-human, half-werewolf dude who can punch the crap out of people with his blood-fighting style, and Stephen A. Starface being able to seemingly use his ice ability. So, I am interested to learn how all of this stuff actually works within this world, but who cares? Let's just kick back, relax, and watch them both fight against a really crazy monster. This guy has a great design. I love the look of it. I love the striking colors with his black ash gray skin, the weird creepy skeletal hand which seems to be coming up right over his face, his super bright yellow hair, and the fact that he can sprout these massive bony featherless wings. He just looks absolutely terrifying, and he's a great opponent for both Klaus and Steven, and we get to see a lot of really great flashy fight scenes here, very similar to what we've seen from the rest of the series, so if anything, the action is definitely going to blow you away. It all looks really freaking solid, but the real star of the show has got to be this blood breeds pet which is this weird creature which seems to be like a skeletal dog of some kind and instead of like a typical body or guts it has like this like giant flower and the more power that it actually grows and drains from people it transforms into this giant hulking beast with a hilarious personality and it seems incredibly powerful to the point where it just knocks the hell out of Zap Renfro and it's up to Luciana Estevez in her modern day form to actually take him down with the use of all of her different clones and some really great scalpel skills. The scene where she comes together as a big super sexy adult is so freaking awesome. I immediately love her character a lot. She seems like she's going to be great 
please let her stick around just a little bit more. Really though, this episode is just an excuse for lots of crazy action with fantastic visuals and some pretty good music cues. Pretty much what you got from the first season. Very episodic and very fun. So, what's the rundown on this week's episode of Blood Blockade Battlefront? While I would have liked to see a little bit more of Leonardo Watch, I'm not above just getting some nice, really cool action animated scenes. It's definitely the type of stuff that I love most about anime. There's not too much substance going on with this episode, but it's so visually fun that I don't even care. All of the characters are just so infectious and cool, and they have so many great quirks that you just can't wait to crack open and learn more about. I hope to see more of Lucy Anna Estevez in the future, she practically seems like she's another member of Libra altogether, and like I said, her presence in the intro and the ending shows that we are at least going to see her just a little bit more. Klaus and Steven in this episode, they're always really fun to watch. They're clearly, I think next to Zap Renfro, definitely the top dogs of the Libra organization. They always tend to be the most flashiest in how they fight, and watching them sort of tag team against this giant monster is definitely the big highlight of this episode. It looks good, it's well animated, and it's just really fun to watch. That's just the best way to put it. Speaking of watch, no Leonardo watch in this episode, aside from just a couple of scenes of him freaking out about Zap being hurt, and a nice little funny post credit scene poking fun at the fact that basically Zap Renfro has had one hell of a day. Really, this was a solid, entertaining, action-packed episode, and I can't wait to see more, and I'm very excited for the next episode, as it's going to focus on the character of Chain Sumeragi, who's one of my personal favorite characters from the show, and we still don't really know a lot about her, so I hope this is going to be like her episode. The one that really showcases why she's so important to the series and why she's such an incredible member in the Libra group. Excuse me, Libra. Every single time I watch this in Japanese, I hear him say Libra even though I know it's Libra. But that's no reason to fault this episode. This one was just fun. Maybe lacking a little bit of substance, but still visually very, it was very appealing. So I'm giving this episode right here a 4 out of 5. Check it out, Blood Blockade Battlefront and Beyond Friends! Yes, make sure to tell me what you thought about this week's episode in the comment section below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, and of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay damn baby!